special edition of LCAT News Update, meeting recap. I'm Rebecca Green. Three boards met last week and we have all the highlights. Going in order, we review the March 13th Board of Public Works meeting. DPW Superintendent Robert Parent provides an overall update on budget, water and waste, and the town's pavement management plan. Uh, the first item I have on my list of items to discuss is the monthly budget update, um, and you'll find that underneath the minutes in your package. Um, we continue to trend well. Um, all the divisions, um, except for the building division, we've discussed before, where we have typically a lot of expenditures occurring early in the fiscal year, all are really right on where we want them to be at this time of year. We have expended uh, significantly more monies this year on snow and ice, no surprise, since it did snow a number of times this year as opposed to last year, but we are well below where we were two years ago. I'll point out one of the trends that I, I think is a very good trend is if we look halfway down our energy budget, you know, we are running below where we were last year by about $50,000 at this time of year. And although our natural gas um, usage is up a little bit from last year, which again isn't surprising because we've had a more seasonable winter season than we did last year, uh, we are still well below budget. We're below budget on our electricity budget as well, which really confirms some of the benefits that that uh, we're seeing from some of the energy efficiency improvements that we make, that we continue to be able to reduce that budget every year. I have a deadline of the end of this month to submit what's known as an operational evaluation to MassDEP to really take a look at the uh, disinfection byproducts that exist within our uh, water system as a result of the disinfection of the water and um, come up with a plan for making certain that we don't exceed any limits. Um, any state or federal limits and, and we're well underway at that point. Um, we are waiting, we were advised late last week that we need to get additional information from the City of Springfield Water and Sewer Commission as well and I spoke with them today and they're providing additional backup information that will be part of our submission to the state. But i um, fairly confident that we'll be, we'll be all set. We had a meeting with the firm that is working on our pavement management plan last week and following up on the meeting we had probably a month or two ago where we talked about taking different approaches to pavement repairs depending on the essentially the, the classification, the functional classification of the roadway. A major roadway, a more expensive um, repair strategy would make sense because we have a lot more traffic on those roadways. That traffic causes the roadway to degrade much faster, whereas if we're looking at a, a local street or a cul-de-sac, uh, a less costly rehabilitation solution would likely give us the same design life as the much more costly improvement on a much more heavily traveled roadway. So we're trying to get them thinking from that standpoint because the reality is we don't have the funds to do everything we need to do, so we need to come up with a strategy that can do as much as we can with what we can have available. Spring is here, which means the DPW is preparing fields for spring sports. Last week's storm slowed down the process. But Building Facilities Manager Bruce Fenney explains that in the next couple of weeks, the fields should be ready to go, if the weather cooperates. Preparation for the fields includes a fertilization plan, which will provide adequate nutrition for the field, enhancing safety and playing conditions. We did uh, contact a uh, local uh, contractor to help with our fertilization program, so we're going to be putting down our step one uh, March 31st. April 7th and April 13th, um, getting out to all the sites. I put out a notification today um, with uh, uh, Mr. McGee, the athletic director for the high school, Colin Drury, and Gordon, and all the principals at the school. So um, we're going to be moving forward with our fertiliza fertilization plan this year. And we'll be doing that with our equipment, our materials, et cetera. So it's, yep. you know, we're really building a team that we could have somebody who has a license that's willing to oversee what we're doing to make certain we're doing it correctly. Yep. Um, but allow us to still perform it ourselves, which saves quite a bit of cost. That's great. The next meeting we covered, the Monday, March 13th school committee meeting. The Board of Health delivered an in-depth presentation about the dangers of marijuana and what we can do as a community to prevent it from reaching our youth. The issue that um, has been raised, um, as the board has been discussing, is really around the regulation at the local level. And one of our challenges is the fact that the act does not address the ability of the local board um, of health to license, regulate, or inspect establishments that sell marijuana or related products such as edible. 
So in our area, um, you know, we have a large number of youth in our, our area. I think of, you know, all the household, 30% have kids that are you know, under the age of 18, which is actually higher than the state and county level, and I believe even the national average. So given that, that's a very, very big concern for us. Um, we do have the ability to pass bylaws and ordinances, but um, that might be challenging and limiting. Board of Health member Karen Robotai shares the latest research on brain development along with recent marketing strategies that target adolescents. Adolescent substance use, why do we care about it? The first reason would be um, brain development. So we know now there's a lot more research now into brain development. We used to think you know, 18 was the magic age where you were grown up and you were ready to face the world as an adult. We now know that the brain is developing up until right around age 25. So when you put substances in it, um, while it's still developing, it can actually affect uh, the brain's future. So what does retail marijuana look like? These are actual pictures from stores out in Colorado. Who are these products marketed towards? Oh, okay. it looks like candy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. This is what we're going to be looking at. And I can tell you, we have a, a medical dispensary up in Northampton, and we've got, you know, we've tried to be really proactive about not seeing some of these products in there, but there are lollipops in there. You know, there's a good reason sometimes for having a lollipop for medical use, but there are definitely things in there that are not necessarily what I think is maybe appropriate as medicine. Dr. Kevin Hinchy compares the noticeable differences between alcohol and marijuana advertising. We're not selling alcohol in a Coke can to get kids to drink it. We're, we're, not, we're not packaging alcohol in something that is attractive to a 10-year-old, a 4-year-old, a 5-year-old that, that allows them to drink it. So whether your politics are for or against marijuana, whether you voted for it, I, I honestly don't care. At age 35, it doesn't matter to me if you smoke marijuana or drink scotch. Neither one of them are going to hurt you too much if you do it in a reasonable way, but it is going to hurt kids. And just as you saw, alcohol hurts the developing brain. So does marijuana. And, and there are ways that we have limited alcohol use for kids. I mean, they're in different bottles. So we put them in our cabinets and we, we lock the doors, per se. This looks like a brownie. This looks like a gummy bear. This looks like something that I got as a reward. Uh, and that's the problem. If we could regulate and say you can't do that, Maybe, but we can't do that. So from the, a very, very practical standpoint, um, it, it, this, I think, transcends politics, whether you're for or against it. This is something that these things should not be allowed because they're really marketed in a way that kids will use them by accident. Um, let alone the kids that want to use it. Uh, all the other kids will, other will use it by accident. And, and that's something that we can stop if we prevent them from being or decrease the risk of if we prevent them from selling them here in East Oak Meadow. The board clarifies what exactly we can do as a community to keep our young ones safe. So the end result is to have a ballot question mm -hmm. on yes. June 6th? Correct. Correct. Like That's the only way that you have an ability to currently regulate it. Are you talking a complete ban on retail sales or, or edibles? So no complete, retail sales. So the way the legislation was written is that you're not able to regulate the edibles. I okay. can't regulate them from a food safety perspective. We can't regulate them in terms of the amounts of THCs or the packaging that they have or the types of edibles sold. There is no ability to do that at all. So in discussions with the board, that's why they felt like this was the only safe option. I thought you had said originally it was just the edibles, but then at the end you said retail. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. no yes. retail establishment. Because that's the way that it's going to be distributed and available right. Right. through the retail. So that does not um, change, that doesn't go against the current law because you're still able to use <coughs> possession of it, personal use right. at home. It's the local It's the retail is yep. selling yep. that in the store, which as you can see, that would be um, a big, very big challenge. Basically, you one shot at shutting this down, right. mm -hmm. right. and it's in June. Yep. Because if we extend beyond that, the regulations could be in place before our next annual election. Right. 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 So it's, and I'm saying that for the benefit of the people that watch our meetings, mm -hmm. because it's critical it's that the ballot question goes out in June to shut this down, if that's the will of the people. For those looking for more information, there will be two community events open to all ages. On April 13th, the East Long Meadow Youth Safety Committee is holding an informational night with Dr. Ruth Poti, 
regarding the neuroscience of addiction and the effect of substance on the developing brain. This event will take place on Thursday, April 13th at 6 p.m. at Bertram Park Middle School. Then on April 27th, there will be a community forum on local control options regarding retail marijuana sales. This event will also be held at Birchland at 6 p.m. Moving on with the meeting, Mountain View principal Elaine Santanello announced that their fifth grade robotics team is on their way to Worlds. So last Sunday, they went to Connecticut and participated in a robotics tournament against 23 other teams and they won two awards and in the large picture there's a picture of the trophies they said that Mountain View won the middle school division and so Mrs. Barry pointed out quickly that we weren't a middle school so they did some conversing in private and they came back out and said oh no you won um, because in some districts fifth grade is a part of a middle school yes. so when they announced that they were qualified to go to Kentucky it took everyone by surprise because we just had no idea that this could even happen. Mountain View and Richmond teacher Deb Barry is dedicated to teaching her students computer coding. Through a special software known as block coding, students are able to program robots. An impressive skill that Barry believes will benefit their future. Four parts are they build and program the robot. The robot has to drive autonomously on the field yeah. with computer programming. There's also driver so they have remote controls, they learn how to drive the robot. So that's the second one. The third one is a research project which shows some aspect of robotics in the real world. So we have um, sports robotics, prosthetic robotics, um, medical uses, this is a robotic snake that does heart surgery, and entertainment robotics. So this is Wally with a the motor. Yeah. They've motorized Wally and he can spin around and talk and tell you his name. So again, that's program that they learned how to do. And then the last aspect of it is um, school driver. That was be one driver by himself. The robotics team will be flying to Kentucky next month to compete in Worlds. Be sure to stop by the library to check out the team's recent winning photo from the Connecticut competition. Lastly, we cover the Wednesday, March 15th Board of Library Trustees meeting. The meeting begins with a report from Library Director Layla Johnston. Unfortunately, one of our fantastic dynamic staff members is leaving. Um, Sam Cardone, she was offered a full-time job at the library in Darien, Connecticut. We're very happy for her, she'll be missed very much. Um, but this will be my first opportunity to coordinate our new hiring process um, with the new town HR department head. Her name is Karen Decker, she's very, um, very good so far. I've had a couple meetings with her, so I'll be sure to keep everybody abreast of the situation. I'm also working on uh, getting together quotes for a consultant who can help facilitate. We need to have two community meetings for our strategic planning process and it was recommended that the director not facilitate those meetings so that I can participate in them. Um, but that's meant to be mainly for people who use the library to just talk about their vision and what they need and in their, their perspective. Mm -hmm. The board moves on to discuss the recent Friends of the Library fundraising event, a whole lot of fun. Each course was decorated with a different literary theme, a wonderful time for families and community members of all ages. It was very well attended. Awesome. Um, families played the, the course, the course looked fantastic, the decorations were great, the children's department put together some wonderful decorations and um, attendance was good. Cindy was here volunteering for a while and uh, they were very it had a very good response this year. So the friends of the library were in full force. They were running their what is a great fundraising mm -hmm. opportunity uh, for them. It was very enjoyable, and what a wonderful place to come for a family on one of the coldest Saturday mornings. I was in, afraid the cold was going to keep people away. I think, I think the cold brought them in. In the middle of winter, so yeah. that's all I have to say. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for watching LCAT News Update Meeting Recap. To watch entire meetings, be sure to head over to our LCAT YouTube channel at LCAT01028 or watch on cable channel 192. For channel times, program guides are available through our website at eastlongmeadowma.gov. Until next time, I'm Rebecca Green. Thanks for watching.